start. So, okay. Yeah. So that's it. We'll uh, continue with this. Uh, it's the chapter 11 of the book. And uh, it looks at uh, regressions with uh, 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 binary dependent variables. Um, so far, we have seen that we have been, what we have been looking at, it's a, uh, we have been looking at like continuous dependent variables or, so now uh, this chapter is uh, getting more specific and we are looking at some of the real case scenarios we might encounter. So uh, it says that uh, we will see uh, that in such uh, models, the regression function can be interpreted as a, a conditional probability function of the dependent variable in which we will, we, we will uh, review the following uh, uh, concepts or uh, like these three models where we have the linear probability model. That's the first one uh, the, the book goes through it. And then we have the, the, the probit and the, the logit uh, models. But basically the project and the logit, I think it's uh, based on the, the, the main differences, the, the, the distribution function we use for the transformation sort of, because uh, he starts by giving an example with the linear probability model. And then uh, after the example, it, it, it shows some of the, 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 the flaws or the, 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 the problems that this linear probability model has. And because of that, we'll have to use either the, the probit or the logit uh, 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 models. And the, the likelihood function, uh, uh, likelihood estimation of, uh, of nonlinear regression models, it's like uh, sort of um, since uh, uh, OLS only works with linear models. So when we have nonlinear models, we have to look at other estimation techniques where it, 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 it mentions two and then, but uh, yeah, it mentions two of the, 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 the estimation techniques to, for the nonlinear. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. The maximum likelihood and yeah. So, and it talks about how we can easily do this in R and, We'll, we'll be using this uh, example, the US uh, mortgage market uh, uh, data set, which is uh, from the AER uh, package. We'll use that uh, a data set to do some of the replications in R and give uh, illustrations. Yeah, I, I think that's what we are gonna do today. And uh, feel free, uh, I came to always uh, come in, uh, like always uh, uh, inter intervene anytime on, Make yeah. Some yeah. Feel free. Yeah. Actually, in case of the probit model, yeah, probit model is actually when we have a, uh, like a like an ordinal variable, mm -hmm. and then the logic model we have a nominal variable. Do you know the difference between the two, right? Because uh, actually, mm -hmm. uh, continuous. Mm -hmm. When we when we say about the uh, variable, it has actually three different types, like a variable. Continuous is uh, what we actually know about, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then the other one is the ordinal. And then a uh, third one is nominal. Actually, these two are what is called a categorical variable. Yeah, categorical, yeah. But the thing is uh, in the nominal variable is a uh, kind of like a nominal variable variable with the uh, uh, with the degree of the with the order. But nominal variable is the without order. I'm sorry, sorry I, mean? I didn't get you, sorry. Yeah, so what does that mean that is in case of the ordinal, Mm -hmm. variable do you know the like uh, when we looking at the survey maybe do you agree or disagree kind of thing right ah, like yeah. uh, like a uh, strongly agree mm -hmm. and agree and maybe normal and disagree and strongly disagree right yeah these are the example of the ordinal variable. So it has an order, like a degree of the magnitude. Mm, yeah. Okay. But each actually each has a categorical, right? It is a categorical variable with the order, with the magnitude. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
that's the what the ordinal variable is about. And then a probability model is actually for the for the ordinal variable. Yeah. So whenever you have a data, you have an outcome variable with a, this kind of a setting. In that case, you have to use the probability. And then in case of the logic, logic is a just kind of a categorical variable. Okay. Like a, like a nominal variable. So that means it is without order. Like, a, for example, like a, when we have a gender variable, right? Mm -hmm. We have a, maybe definitely have a male, female, right? Yeah. These are the example of the nominal variable, just the categorical, what we actually know about. There is a no order and then a, there is a no magnitude, okay? Like, a, like a, we cannot say about the male is much, much greater than female. That's not true. That doesn't make sense at all, right? Yeah. That is actually nominal variable. So it is a no, no magnitude across uh, between the items. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thanks, yeah. Yeah. And then Odin, in case of the ordinal variable, like uh, strongly disagree, disagree, normal, agree, and strong agree. In that case, ordinal variable has the, has a, what is called the order. Like a strongly disagree is a kind of like a lowest one compared to the strongly agree, right? Mm-hmm. There is actually what is called the very subjective differences intervals between the each item, but we cannot measure the how big it is between the between the in terms of the magnitude between the item, which means, for example, like uh, if we can say about the continuous variable like uh, one two three, okay. Yeah. Three is actually three is the three times bigger than one, right? Yes. So that means we can actually measure measure the magnitude between the between the item, right? Two is the twice bigger than one. Three is the three times bigger than one. And three is the 1.5 times bigger than two, right? We can measure the interval, what is called the interval between the, these two, right? Yeah. But in case of the ordinal variable, it is, we cannot exactly measure the how strongly agree and how agree, how agree is the uh, uh, different from one another. So like you said, when, you, when, when we do the survey, you may think about something about the strongly disagree, but I'm thinking about the agree. That means yeah. we cannot measure the actually actually magnitude differences between the when I choose the agree and then when you choose the strongly disagree. We cannot actually figure out the how what's how difference between the those two between the items between the categories in case of the ordinal variable. Nominal variable, we cannot measure anything about the magnitude or order. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thanks, yeah, thanks so, for... yeah, that's the kind of a big differences. So, yeah, I just yeah, want yeah. to make you, yeah, probably is the ordinal, logic is the ordinal nominal. So, yeah, it's, it, it seems like the, the author doesn't really consider, doesn't explain yeah. something. Yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah, so we uh, start with the the sort of the binary dependent variable with the with the, the, the linear probability case, and uh, sort of the key concept uh, one sort of gives us uh, a basic overview of what the linear probability model looks like, where we have our uh, model specification like linear regression model specification, y i is uh, equals to equals to to to, to this, and then. Uh, um, with a binary dependent variable, uh, yi is uh, called a linear, uh, sort of yi is called a, a, a linear probability model with a linear, with, uh, in the linear probability model, we have like sort of uh, expectations, you know, we have like, uh, uh, we have like, we have like yi, we have like expected value of 
why given the regressions it's uh we could uh, give it uh expectation or pro expectations like it's equal to the probability of y equals to one given the regressions where the probability of y equals to one given regressions is just our uh, our normal uh, regression equation so uh, in this case we could uh uh, interpret uh, the betas as we did previously just uh, like we we have seen previously however in in such a a, a case the how i call it the the r square is not of any use has no meaningful interpretation uh, in the regression line and since uh, uh, the since the regression line can never fit the the data perfectly because we are dealing with a, a dependent variable that is binary, and then we have the regressions are continuous. So the R square is not informative. And it also mentions that since our error term, it's a, it's not homoscedastic, we'll also have, we, we have to estimate uh, robust standard errors. Instead of just yes, estimating uh, the, the, the normal standard errors, he suggests that we use the robust standard errors. Yeah, and uh, I think that's the basically that's the the motivation and the the main um, thing we have to know about the linear model, and then it uh, gives us an example using the data. Yeah, so we have the the the, the data as usual. We uh, load the data in R and um, and then we do some. That's the the data it uh, in, uh following the book or we start by loading the data uh with uh yeah the the data is uh, related to the mortgage application filed in uh, uh boston in the year 1990 and we could see the so the deny is a like a um is the the the, the dependent variable which is like binary which is a yes or no variable it is like a, a factor, R treats it as a factor. And then we have the P, P rat, which is the, 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 the sort of the payment to income ratio of the, the, the applicant. And the, the, the he rat also, I think it uh, has, has to do something with the, 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 the interest payment of the particular this, uh, loan. The, the LV rat measures sort of how risky uh, the riskiness of the the loan, and uh, these variables are. The, I think this one measures the credit history and the mortgage history, the payment history of the applicant, and this one looks at the employment, uh, the unemployment rate, the whether the uh, applicant is self-employed, the insurance associated with the mortgage, and the uh, condominium, and whether the applicant is African American, single has a high school degree or not. So basically these are the uh, variables in the data set and the, sum, uh, the summary gives us an overview of the, the, the data set and gives us uh, an overview of the data set. We could see the, uh, like uh, mm. the application is accepted more, like uh, in mm. like two, uh, 2,900 and the case where it is denied, we have like 285. Mm. Yeah, like if you want to say something about the data. No, nothing, nothing really. So, yeah, actually, this one is about the, when we have a y, y variable only have a zero and one, or maybe y have a yes or no. Yeah. In that case, we can actually work on this way. Like, what's the probability of the uh, what's the probability of the application should be from uh, from no to yes, depending on the variable. So anyway, yeah, you just keep going on. Yeah, so uh, uh, that's it now. It, it's sort of defining some of the, the key variables, like the, the variable mm -hmm. we're interested with is the deny, which indicates mm -hmm. whether uh, 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 an, uh, an applicant's mortgage application is accepted with uh, zero and denied mm -hmm. with uh, Yes, uh, and the, the 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 main regression of interest is uh, the 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 period, which is uh, the the size of the uh, anticipated total monthly payment, total loan, uh, like sort of the the monthly interest payment, uh, 
of the applicant relative to the applicant's income. So we could mm. see from the, the model specification that there is a, a positive relationship between the, the PI ratio, that is the, mm. the, the, the payment, uh, the monthly payment to income ratio with the, mm. the, the deny. So like the higher your the PI ratio, the higher your chance of the application being denied. Mm. Yeah. So we could use uh, the, 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 the LM function that we have been using so far to, to do this uh, in R. Mm -hmm. uh, first, we have to uh, change this deny to uh, numeric, which we could use do using the as numeric function. Mm. And yeah, we, when we estimate the model, we have something like this. And we have the coefficient on the, the period as uh, like, uh, that's the that's the coefficient, mm -hmm. which uh, it's like uh, uh, shows us like we we know it's uh, it's positive, right? Yeah. 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 So, what's the probability of the this thing means? Yeah, it, it tells us like uh, we we could give it a like sort of a, a probability interpretation. Mm -hmm. It's not. Uh, like he mentioned, the interpretation is not very straightforward, but but it's like a, um, a payment uh, like the, the PI. If the if the uh, the PI ratio increases by let's say one percent, then the the denial uh, the chance of being denied the probability of denial is like let's say sixty percent something like this. Hello. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, you just yeah, keep going on. Yeah. Yeah, something like this. So it tries to uh, uh he he tries to uh plot that, and we could see like, mm. right? but this does not really um um it's not uh, uh, uh doesn't give a real representation uh, sort of representation of the 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 sort of the the variability or the, the model. So, yeah. Hmm. Uh, we can also see the standard errors. We could see that uh, this is highly significant. The probability, hmm. at, even at the 1% level, it's still uh, like significant. Mm -hmm. Also, the, the, the true coefficient uh, on PI ratio is statistically different from zero at the 1% the level. Uh, its estimate can be interpreted as a 1% uh, uh, point increase in the year. So it's uh, not 60%, but like 0.6% uh, or yeah, 0.6%. Yeah, because it's a 1% increase, so. Yeah, 1% increase, yeah. 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 Just make a scale, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So now it, uh, it's trying to add uh, another variable, like the black variable to this, uh, regression model and see whether there is some uh, kind of a discrimination in this uh, um, uh, mortgage. Uh, mm. Yeah, whether there is some discrimination. So it, it uh, adds the, the black uh, variable. Mm -hmm. And we could we could see that uh, from what we have seen, it's showing like there is a, a discrimination mm -hmm. because we are seeing that uh, being black increases your the probability of being denied by Mm. Uh, like uh, 17 or 1.7%, yeah. something like this. It is a 17%. Like a 17%. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but uh, it's a, the, yeah, two and one kind of thing. Yeah, 0.1%. So. Uh, yeah. So at the increases by uh, 17%, which is quite high. So this shows that there is some uh, uh, this discrimination. Yeah. But mm. um, However, we, we might not be able to con con conclude because we could have some limited variable bias problem. Mm -hmm. So um, now he will try to uh, explain some of those things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So because of the, the issues we have with the linear probability model, now we have to look at uh, the either the probit or the logit uh, regression. Since uh, in the in the linear probability model case, we had 
probabilities that were uh, outside uh, the zero one limit, which uh, which uh, which 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 is not correct. We, for for example, we had probability of the 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 PI ratio greater than one point uh, seven five, and also we had uh, cases where we had almost negative uh, probabilities, which are not. So because of these reasons, we have to uh, we call for calls for an approach that uses nonlinear functions to uh, model the conditional probability function of a binary uh, dependent variable. Commonly used methods are the the the, the probit and the logit uh, models. So in the probit case, we we use like transform the the model. To which tries to capture the nonlinearity in in our regression model, and in the probit case, we use the uh, cumulative uh, standard normal distribution function to transform the the model from linear to nonlinear. So we'll have the 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 expected value of y given the regressors is equals to the probability of y equals to one given the regressors. However, with uh, the function with the uh, the cumulative standard normal distribution function transforming this model to capture the nonlinearity that is present in the in the model, and he tries to explain this, giving us like the example of the the z score we have uh, seen. Um, the the z score we have seen, like in the, I think uh, in the the first few chapters, he explains that yeah, changes uh, uh, in in z associated with one unit change in in x. Um, uh, although the effect on z of a change in x is linear, but the the link between uh, z and y is it's nonlinear, since uh, the 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 cumulative standard normal function is a nonlinear function of x. So basically, this is where the transform this is how the transformation takes place, which is the this is a is a gamma or this function is what does the transformation. However, with this, the interpretation doesn't seem to be very clear. The interpretation is not straightforward. Uh, since uh, the, the, the dependent variable is a nonlinear function of the regressors, the coefficient on X has, uh, it doesn't have like a, a very straightforward interpretation. So he is giving us some possible ways we could interpret the, 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 this, uh, this uh, coefficient on, on X. On the regressors, one we could use the predict function in in R and predict the probability that y equals to one for the 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 the, the regression of interest, or we could compute the uh, the predictor predicted probability that y is equals to one for the regression of x plus a change in in x. So compute the difference between the, uh, both predicted uh, probabilities. So this are uh, this is how we could get the interpretation. Yeah, we have talked of talked about this already, and to get this in R, we'll use the GLM uh, function, which is from the the, the stats uh, package. Yeah, and 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 that's it. When we do estimation in R, we'll have um, we'll have something like that. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, we could see the coefficients. The uh, we have like uh, I don't think the, the difference doesn't seem to be much. Oh yeah, the difference is much because previously we are, we are having zero point. Uh, yeah, zero point six zero six. Yeah, so yeah, it is huge actually. Yeah, the difference is huge. We have like two point uh, nine something. Yeah, seven. Yeah, huge. Mm. Yeah, because we actually reflected the linear, the linearity between the our model yeah. uh, in the in the outcome variable. Yeah. So that's the reason why we have uh, that kind of amount. Actually, it is yeah a lot of very significant and then a very high magnitude of the denial ratio yeah. so yeah but i i think hmm. the problem here is we cannot directly interpret this right yeah because yeah. because of the you actually interpret this one is like a 
So, so 1% increase of the PI ratio, right? That is actually 2.97 multiplied by 0 0.01 equal 0 0.20297, right? Yeah. So, but the thing is in this one, we actually take the exponential mm -hmm. for the 0 0.20297. This one is actually kind of a 2% increase, like a, 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 almost like a 3% increase mm -hmm. in denial. Actually, it's a, it's a value is a small compared to the previous one. Because the previous one is a highly biased and then a highly overestimated. You know, when you try to do the linear probability model, yeah. that actually tends to be have a more overestimate the value. Because uh, this one is actually learning a function and then how we can interpret this coefficient is uh, we actually take the exponential, like uh, E, 0 0.0297. This one is actually like a, about 2% increase, like a 2.97% increase of the denial. So that's about the 3% uh, increase in the denial. So that means like uh, when we have a 1% increase into yeah. the PI ratio, that mm -hmm. actually increases the 3% of denial of the uh, of the uh, of the mortgage. I think that you are zoom out too much. Yeah, are you seeing? Yeah, yeah, I can see that. Yeah, so mm -hmm. that's how actually interpret in theory. But usually, when we try to looking at the this kind of a model, we just only looking at the p value, and then the our our the the magnitude or magnitude and direction direction of the of the coefficient. The coefficient yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that means we just literally says about the pi ratio actually positively uh, associated with the denial with the ratio. Denial, so, yeah, denial. Yeah. So denial that energy. means yeah. That means high PI ratio gonna be uh, gonna give us to the uh, yeah, high probability of high, the, yeah, high probability of the mortgage being denial. So that yeah, means that actually makes sense because compared to the income, right? Compared yeah. to the income, we pay too we pay too much for we pay too much for the mortgage compared to the income like a like uh, for example, if you make a uh, ten thousand dollar per month, but the thing is, you you have to pay maybe eight eight thousand dollars out of your mm -hmm. pocket for the mortgages out of the, your ten thousand dollars. PI ratio is the point zero eight uh, point uh, point eight per eight, right? In that case, it's uh, too high. That means you cannot get the mortgage because. Uh, Compared to the your your income like a ten thousand dollar, you have to pay eight thousand dollar out of the debt income. You only you only have a two thousand dollar in your pocket for your living yeah, you expenses, cannot, yeah, yeah. right? That means for the bankers, bankers they think that they they can uh you you maybe maybe they can they are more likely to more likely not paying for the monthly mortgages yeah. because it's too risky because they have to spend their some of the money for their living expenses from the ten thousand dollar but you have to pay the eight thousand dollar and then two thousand dollar left that means you sometimes spend more money for the living expenses in that case you cannot pay your mortgage so that means for the bankers, uh, bankers, it is too risky. So they can say, okay, you cannot get the mortgage. 
So yeah. that's the how it works. So that's the kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Thanks for for that. Yeah. We continue, and now we are plotting plotting mm -hmm. this uh, uh, model and see. We we can clearly see the the non non linearity. We could see yeah. how yeah it's captured uh, here. We could see the the the, the tails are like flat. Yeah. Yeah. So which are uh, clearly um, captures yeah. the 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 non linearity. Yeah, this one actually also shows that uh, after the PI ratio is the one point nine, yeah. which means you actually have to pay 1.5 times more of the income, that means it definitely denial. It's actually a threshold, you know? Yeah. Yeah, and then yeah. there is also another threshold call in here. Like uh, for the bankers, when they get the denial ratio is the point of 0.5, like a PI ratio is a maybe 0.75. In that case, you will get higher probability of the getting, getting, uh, not getting the mortgages after the this point. Yeah. And yeah. then after the this point, after the this point, you like definitely you have a no. Yeah, you, you don't get it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But in here, like in the in the first point, like a point point five points, like mm -hmm. a like a BP point, that is actually called the when your PI ratio is the point seven five. Yeah, that's a so, uh, fifty chance. Yeah. 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 So that's the kind of important kind of a threshold point be when you're looking at the graphs. Yeah, looks interesting. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, now it's like uh, trying to talk about uh, if we really want to um, like interpret the, 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 the results. Like, you know, he mentioned uh, the, the three possible alternatives we could use. Uh, we could use the predict function to compare, to compute the predicted change in the denial um, probability when PI ratio increases from um, 0 0.3 to 0 0.4. And so we could see the, the, the denial ratio is like, uh, let's say 6%, like 6.1%. Well, we find that uh, the, uh, uh, an increase in the probability in the, P, the PI ratio from 0.3 to 0.4 is predicted to increase the uh, probability of denial by 6.1. So basically this is how we can uh, interpret this uh, 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 coefficients we have. We have to sort of zoom in a little bit and Look at uh, mm -hmm. specific uh, cases to to be able to interpret uh, to, to be able to interpret this, uh, which, is, yeah, which, is, uh, which is similar to what we have seen almost in the linear case. Almost, almost it is same, actually right? not exactly the same for the linear because it's uh, actually kind of a case. Because uh, when we're looking at the plot uh, uh, graph at the top, we actually have uh, these kind of graphs, right? Yeah. So in that case, when we try to uh, try to measuring the each slope, yeah, the tangent, yeah, yeah, a tangent line is the changes. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. So when they say when it says about here is like a point three and point four changes this slope. And then compared to the 0 0.6 and 0 0.7, like this slope. So it's quite different, right? That's yeah. what it, it says about this. So depending on the where, which part you actually calculating the slope, difference is uh, quite a lot. Yeah, okay? yeah, yeah. That is what it called the nonlinear because uh, in the linear probability, we only have a very straight line positions, right? Yeah, it's the fixed, it, yeah, it's, it is a fixed slope, right? Yeah, this slope is fixed, yeah. But the thing is in this case, like a smooth S-line curve, every, every segment has a different slope, right? Yeah, yeah. 
that's the how he calculate about the differences in slope. So, cause uh, yeah. Yeah. in the in the slope between the point three and point four, and slope between point six and point seven is the quite different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So but basically, that's it. That's a uh, sort of a, a, a sort of a framework we could use to um, mm -hmm. sort of. Uh, interpret uh, nonlinear um, models. Mm -hmm. So uh, here it continues to like uh, add the, the black uh, variable mm -hmm. and see mm -hmm. whether there is some uh, discrimination. Mm -hmm. And we could see the the, the, the coefficient on the black is uh, uh, zero point uh, seven one. Mm -hmm. So uh, again, he mentions it's, it's difficult to uh, interpret this. So we use uh, we try to hold this uh, period constant, and then we look at the 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 the, deny, the difference in denial for black and uh, and white. That we see that the difference is uh, like 15 percent, which is which is huge. Yeah, we see we get a difference of uh, uh, like uh, uh, if you are a black, the the chance of being denied it's like uh, fifteen point eight percent compared to a white. Which is which uh, sort of indicates that there is uh, uh, a high discrimination in this uh, um, in this particular mortgage uh, application. Yeah, and that's it for the uh, the, the profit case. We look at the the logit case. Uh, I think the main difference here it's basically the 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 distribution function that is used to to capture the uh, the, the nonlinearity in a in our model, right? Mm -hmm. So here we are using uh, uh, the the CDF. Uh, we are using the, the 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 CDF to transform the 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 model, which is like one over one plus uh, e to the power minus x, mm -hmm. which is the which is uh, the CDF of a standard uh, standard logistically distributed random variable. So, mm -hmm. so basically, that's. Uh, in the in the in the profit case, we used uh, the 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 standard normal, but uh, here we are using a, um, a, a sort a sort of a cumulative density function. Sort of, we are. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. That it could be transformed like that. Hmm. Yeah. So oh, um, it, then it proceeds to give some uh, examples in R to to model this. We'll still use the the, the GLM function. Only that we'll have to specify logit instead of probit mm. in the in the family of the binomial distribution. We'll use the logit instead of probit, and mm -hmm. yeah, we'll do the estimations and we get the uh, the coefficient is still a uh, 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 positive. Uh, um, yeah, it's the coefficient is still. Yeah, it's still positive. And uh, to 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 get the the interpretation, we'll just do like we did previously. So we just look at uh, from one point to another how it uh, how it uh, the 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 probability of denial will 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 increase from let's say like we did previously from zero point three to zero point four something like this. And now it's trying to model it. We could see the uh, the, the models. We have the the logit and the, the probit uh, models. Well, uh, they, they are very similar, but it seems like the 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 the, the, the logit model seems to be steeper compared to the probit. They are very similar. Yeah, so we could also add uh, the black like we did previously. And yeah, we could uh, see that for comparison, we uh, compute the predict probability of denial for two hypothetical applicants that differ in, in race and have a PI of like, a, we, we, we hold PI constant and then see the, the difference in, 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 in ratio in, 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 in race and see how that uh, uh, changes the probability of denial. And we could see it here. It's like uh, 
14 um, percent. Hmm. Yeah, like uh, 14 percent, which is uh, which is quite uh, high. Uh, so the difference between the uh, a black and a white is like uh, so a white uh, a black high has 14 uh, percent chance that uh, higher than than a white for 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 the application being denied. Yeah, so the profit and the logic models deliver only approximations to unknown uh, population regressions of this uh, uh, expected uh, probability or conditional probability function. Hmm. So he, here is just like giving an overview of what, what we have done. Actually, yeah. in here, when you're yeah. looking at the comparison of the model, actually this one, I don't, mm -hmm. I'm kind of a disagree with what author said, cause in here is, cause uh, he says use the method that is the easiest to use in a yeah, based program. On, oh, based yeah. on the software. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the thing is that's not true. Mm -hmm. It depends on about the, what's the our outcome variable is about. Like, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. People, why yeah, is uh, yeah, yes or no kind of things like a binary or nominal kind of situation? We definitely you goes to the GLM and then uh, definitely to the to going to the nominal like a logic variable, logic model. I mean, yeah. to estimate the probability because the linear probability does not show us the better result. So mm -hmm. it is not the not the use the method for the easiest to use in the statistical software of the choice. No, that's not true. It totally follows about the, our our outcome variable. So, like I said, if mm -hmm. we thinking about the order is a very important, we have to use the profit. Order is not important, like. A, male and female or yes or no in this case we actually use the logic and then a linear probability model we we actually do not use quite frequently whenever we have a kind of a categorical or binary kind of a situations we always think about using the Logit or profit. Yeah, no, usually yeah. profit. Usually profit is the kind of our generally the top choice, you know. Yeah. Because the uh, logic actually more care more sensitive about the changing changing the category. Okay. The reason why we have a more steeper curve is is that the logic uh Logic model is the more sensitive, more elastic about the changes of the variable, impact of the independent variable on outcome variable. So, so yeah. it's not true. Like, like uh, do not use the method that is the easiest to use. That's not true. <laughs> okay. It totally yeah, depends but there, there are reasons that we cannot, we cannot, uh, we we can therefore give no general yeah. recommendation. Which method? Yeah. So it's like um, saying that you know. <laughs> but in know. theory, we have every time we have a nominal variable, we always thinking about the logic variable or multi-logic yeah, logic, yeah. or or maybe other kind of a Poisson or negative binomial kind of a situation. So we always think about using the logic regression in this case, not the kind of mm -hmm. a, if we have a are comparable with the order, like ordinary variable, we use the profit. Yeah, yeah. okay, so that's yeah, it. Thanks, thanks for that uh, clarification, yeah. 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 Yeah, so now it's talking about estimation and inference uh, in the logic mm -hmm. and the, the profit model. So here mm -hmm. it's saying that because we are having a, a non-linear model, we cannot use OLS, which uh, it's the main motivation why we, we are using uh, the the, Sort of the nonlinear um, models. So in in the nonlinear case, we cannot use OLS. So we have to use other estimators, and 
one of them it's the maximum likelihood estimator and another is the nonlinear least squares. Hmm. So the so it's trying to give us an overview of the each of them, but they still all maximize the 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 the, the residuals like the 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 squared residuals. That is basically they all maximize. In the case of the uh, nonlinear, it, it does that and the yeah, so that is a, a, a package in R that does this for us. Mm -hmm. Whilst the uh, to estimate uh, the unknown parameters, choosing them such that the likelihood of drawing a sample uh, observe, uh, observe is, is it's sort of maximized. Mm. Yeah, so uh, basically, it, uh, put it differently, the maximum likelihood estimator of the unknown parameters are the values that result in a model which is most likely to produce the, the data observed. So since we don't have the, the we are, uh, we are using sort of the unobserved. So we try to maximize the likelihood of our model representing the actual data we we, we want to estimate sort of. I, I don't know whether that <laughs> makes sense, you know. It is actually about the kind of, a, we don't have any kind of, a, uh, we don't have any kind of a parameter that is known. And then uh, we just uh, try to looking at the, the probability distribution and then uh, to see the differences. So that's the maximum likelihood. So how similar our data distribution probability of the data distributions can be similar to the actual hypothetical population, this population uh, probability distribution of the hypothetical populations. Population, yeah. Measure, yeah. So. Yeah, now it talks about the, the fit and talks about uh, uh, mm -hmm. like uh, R square not the R and adjusted R square not being invalid for sort of non, uh, for, for, for nonlinear regression models. The main reason because both uh, uh, measures assume that the relationship between the dependent and independent variable is linear. In which mm -hmm. case, in this case, uh, since the, the, the relationship is nonlinear, so they are not sort of, they are invalid. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it, it goes into detail explaining that, but it also mentioned um, alternatively, we could use the pseudo R square measure mm. to sort of mm. uh, sort of serve as a, a so called R square in a model mm. which uh, sort of tells us something about the fit, how uh, the goodness of fit of our, of our model. Mm. Basically, that's what it's uh, trying to explain here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I don't know if you want to say anything on this, but I yeah. Yeah. This this formula actually we use a lot. Because mm -hmm. uh, in the logic or probability regression, especially for the uh, this one, like a deviance. Yeah, Can deviance, you yeah. Go down a little bit. Yeah. Hold on. Hold. Yeah. This one we use a lot. It's a minus negative, minus two log mode one and log mode two. So this one is actually, actually says about the, when this one is the positive, first one is much better. It's the negative, second one is better. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So, Whenever we calculate this one, we can get we can get the either positive or negative value, right? Mm -hmm. If it is a positive, means uh, the 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 thing within the parentheses is the negative, right? So yeah, in yeah. that case, yeah, in that case, uh, it's the negative. So in that case, okay. In that case, the second model is better. Okay. And then uh, it's a positive. First one, first one is the better. Okay. Yeah. That's what this one is interpreted. Okay. I will, I will try to explain again. Okay. Hold on. Okay. How, how I can, yeah. So, 
So actually, when we calculate the deviance, it's the actually in here, when you're looking at here, it's the negative minus two, right? Yeah. And then the, the thing we have to judge is we have to looking at the, what's the direction of the, these things within the parentheses. This one is a positive in this case, right? Yeah. Whole deviance is the negative, right? Yeah, yeah. So in this case, first model fits better. And then this one is a negative. That means deviance is the positive, right? Yeah. In that case, second model. But is it, so, is, is how do we come up with this uh, rule of citing like? It, that is what I learned actually, because uh, when, 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 this, when this one says is uh, actually in this, the point within the parentheses, yeah. this one is actually about the kind of like a maximum likelihood of the each yeah. model. Yeah, the first one, right? Yeah. So actually the this one within the parenthesis is a positive is first model maximum likelihood of the first model is much better than the second model. Oh uh, yeah. That means first model has a much bigger mix maximum likelihood. That means have a more goodness of fit. So that fits better. Do you understand? Yeah. And then if the within the in the parenthesis is the negative, that means the second model has a much bigger maximum likelihood compared to the maximum likelihood of the first model. That means second model has a kind of like a much better. Like a, a much better. Yeah, yeah. Model. So it's uh, about to compare to the full or saturated in this case, right? Yeah. Or maybe we can also think about uh, these kind of things, like uh, in the second one. Yeah, like, uh, yeah. No, compared to the saturated. Or maybe we can also say about, we can also think about uh, this one, like a uh, deviance equals minus two. Uh, log model one minus log model two in this case. So what does that mean is we have a model one and model two. We don't know and what, what it is, but we wanted to know about the which model is better. Right? This yeah. is how deviance is about. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But the thing in here is what is mean about the saturated and, and full or null, okay? Mm -hmm. Those are the older, what is called the nested model. What you mean by that is the null model is a y equal no independent variable, right? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then maybe if we can say about the y equal maybe beta zero plus the beta one, x one, then, beta two, x two, yeah. this one maybe assuming that this one is a full model. And then uh, y saturated is the beta zero, beta one, x one, beta two, x two, plus beta three, x three, s, and then beta n, x n. This one is the saturated. What you mean is the saturated means is a use the all of the variable that we can get in the model. And then a full model is a kind of like a model that we think it is the best fit. And then no the model is a kind of a no independent variable used. So what you the when you think about the, each of the, these equations, you can think about is the all of the this model actually nested. Right? Yeah, yeah. 
it belongs to one another. So that's the how, how this one can be used. The null deviance and deviance is the use when we have a nested model, situation models to estimate the maximum likelihood of each model. And then, and then find out what is the good goodness or what is the model for the best goodness of fit? Yeah, the goodness of fit. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's the kind of thing. And then the pseudo R square is uh, just kind of a one minus is the no and uh, full deviance. So, but we do not actually use the, this R square, but, but sometimes we use it depending on our research. So, yeah. Hmm. Nice. Uh, thanks. Thanks for that uh, explanation. Mm. Yeah. So it's just showing us how we can do this in in our. Yeah. Yeah, and we move to the the final part where it uh, uh, gives us an example of the an application with uh, using the data. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So yeah, we uh, just um, look at. Uh, the, the the models indicated the, the, the denial rate is high for uh, mm -hmm. uh, African American applicants holding the payment uh, to income ratio constant, but we could have mm -hmm. omitted variable bias problem. Mm -hmm. So now in this application, we are sort of trying to control for financial variables and additional applica applicant characteristics, which are likely to mm -hmm. influence the probability of denial mm -hmm. and differ between blacks and and whites. Sort of like trying to um, um, sort of estimate different models and also mm. trying to hold as many uh, covariates uh, uh, constant or control for as many covariates as possible so so that uh, we could see how reliable our, our uh, point estimates will be. Mm. So before doing that, it tries to give us some, see the PI, mean is like a 0.33 and then we have the in-house expenses the in-house expenses to total income ratio which is uh the HERAT, which is uh 0 0.25 to 255 mm -hmm. so uh, i think this if, if uh, the higher this is could be uh, sort of uh, positively correlated with the denial sort of loan to value ratio so it's uh, given us uh, mm. the, the 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 mean of all the key variables mm. yeah the mood gauge credit score yeah these are the just kind of a descriptive statistic of the each variable and then yeah 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 so uh it's uh now we could uh before estimating the model, we transform the loan to value uh, ratio. So this loan mm -hmm. to value ratio sort of tells us how sort of risky the, the, the this loan is sort of. Mm -hmm. So where we could have like uh, low risk if it's less than 0 0.8, mm -hmm. a medium when it's between 0 0.8 and 0 0.95 and high risk when mm -hmm. it's, so we, mm -hmm. we can do that in R. Mm -hmm. So now we start estimating the various models. Mm -hmm. We see model one. Mm -hmm. Model one, it like looks at the, the denial linear control. probability. Yeah, yeah, is the yeah the linear probability model which uses the LM, and it looks mm -hmm. at the black and all the other mm -hmm. uh, variables, mm -hmm. and uh, is a logit model. Mm -hmm. And uh, model three, it's uh, probit just like uh, the, the same logic model but in the in estimated using the profit and model four it's a profit but we add more controls we include it whether the person whether applicant is single single whether applicant has a high school degree we also included uh, unemployment hmm. and uh, model five yeah includes other um, characteristics as in hmm. It includes uh, 
sorry, are, are these interactions or, or squared? Hmm. Hmm. It's quite, yeah. Hmm? It's quite complicated. It looks like a, uh, I'm kind of a little bit confused why he did this, the, but. The table? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you just look at the table. Yeah, yeah. I, I think sort of mm. maybe try to maybe yeah. square them or. Right. I'm not sure. Okay. Yeah, but they're hardly even significant. So they, are, they don't make much difference. Mm. Yeah. So the full mm. model is uh, the, the first three models. Mm. Yeah, the first Actually, three models we could see. Yeah, you can go down to the table. Yeah. You will find that the log likelihood here. Ah, right? yeah, yeah, we see, yeah, 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 yeah. So based on the this one, actually, it looks like uh, this model actually fit the best. It is actually close to be zero. Like uh, it's the biggest, biggest, uh, it's the maximum log likelihood is the uh, biggest compared to the, the other, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's so like this one, five, and then right? when we when we looking at the AIC here, this one, we will see that this one is the lowest one. You know, yeah. so it looks like uh, this model actually fits the best. So it is actually a little bit complicated. So so it depends on about the. When we looking up to the variable, how we can try to combine to the this variable and then uh, like uh, like uh, which one is the uh, what? So maybe this one and this one, which one we gonna use is the totally depending on the context of our research. That's the what we have to know, actually. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, I think basically that's it for, for this. Now it's just trying to explain some um, interesting things in the, the table. It, it gives a, a good summary at the end and says uh, model one to six provide evidence that there is an effect of being African-American on the probability of mortgage application denial. Uh, in all specifications, the effect is uh, estimated to be positive, like ranging from four to 5% and mm. significantly different from zero to 1%. While yeah, in uh, here, yeah. yeah, the linear model seems to slightly overestimate uh, this effect, so yeah. uh, it can be used. Yeah, so uh, basically, I I think this exam this uh, chapter is quite interesting because it, it depending on your research, you could uh, have to work with uh, either a probit or a logit, and like you explain that yeah. the, the decision to use the logit or the mod or the probit depends on whether you are working with a, a nominal or a ordinal categorical variable, which is uh, quite good to know. Yeah. Yeah, if you if you have any comments or